the hardest thing that I would say for a kid when they come into foster care is everything they know has been ripped out from underneath them. They completely feel alone in the world. A kid comes into a house, they've been allow allowed to live under this whole set of rules and now they're in a stranger's home. They don't know you. You're nobody and I'm supposed to listen to you? Um, for Jasmine, she came in with a big old chip on her shoulder. She wasn't going to be staying. She just came from a home where she could do what she wanted and if she got mad at her mom, she called her grandma and her grandma came and got her. And Then when she went home, they never discussed the problem. My mom allowed me to smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol and smoke weed <laughs> and do all the bad stuff. <laughs> I thought it was cool, but I knew it was wrong for her to let me do it, but I was okay with it because she was letting me do it and I enjoyed doing it. I don't want to say it was a neglect, it was a neglect, it would be classified as a neglect home, not an abuse home, but um, it was mostly too much freedom, which is also a challenge, you know, when a kid is allowed to smoke, drink with your parent. There's no boundary, there's no respect. Why should I respect you if you're doing the same things I do with my friends? So for her, that was a big adjustment too for her to realize that this, she knows it's not right, but if your parent lets you do it, then it's all right, you know. My mom was a, she abused um, prescription medication. So I had to take care of her because she was always looped up all the time and I had to take care of my brothers and do our laundry and somehow find a way to feed me and my brothers because my mom would never go grocery shopping. I would take her food cart and go to the store and buy like pizzas or Hot Pockets or something like that and have them in the house. And that's what we lived off of was like Hot Pockets because my mom went and bought like a big box of Hot Pockets and that's all we lived off of them. When I moved here I had somebody to take care of me and not me have to take care of them. So like before I didn't have dinners with my family, now we have dinner like every night on the table. And My goal wasn't to adopt, it was just to take teenagers and help get them prepared for the world because of my experience in foster care. I already wanted her to adopt me before she even asked. I just wasn't going to ask her because I didn't want her to feel like she had to do it. I wanted to know that she wanted it, so I just waited for her to ask me. And then I already told her when she asked me that I wanted it. And we had some ups and downs. We were going to do the adoption before that, and then we had some setbacks, and I wanted to make sure it was something I could stay committed to, because it's a big commitment. So she just told me that she wanted to adopt me because she thinks it would make me feel more like I have a place, and just asked me if uh, she could adopt me. It's been a good experience. Jasmine's very mature, so it's I made the mistake, even as many years as I've done this, of sometimes forgetting that she's still a kid and not an adult. You know, like when it comes to um, discussing other kids' issues or anything, you forget when kids can be mature because she had to grow up when she was in the home, in her home. I would always, when we got in a fight, I would run and I would just try to run from my problems. She makes me solve my problems instead of running from them. And I just am still kind of bad with it because I don't really know how to approach communicating about it, so I like, I'd rather have somebody come to me and want to talk about it because I don't know how to go to them and approach it. So learning to communicate, like I've made her since she's been with me, like, okay, we might be mad when you leave and you go to someone's house, and I don't really let her do that, I make her deal with it, you, you have to come back and communicate over it. You can't pretend it didn't happen because it just is still there. Well, I'd still rather do whatever I wanted, but I know if I went off and did whatever I wanted, I would go nowhere because I still need a parent structure. I need somebody there to guide me to do the right things. And because if I went off and did whatever I wanted, I probably wouldn't go to college even though I want to. I probably wouldn't because I wouldn't have the financial help of, that a parent gives you. And I wouldn't have somebody there to push me to go to school every day or push me to get a job or stuff like that. So I think if a person wants to do whatever they want, they should still want their parent. <laughs> There's not enough homes for teenagers. Everybody wants small children. You know, not real, and I understand that to a point, <laughs> um, but it, there's a lot of rewards for all the frustrations I've had. It's a really good feeling um, to come home to kids that they don't even know it yet, but they're glad you came home. They know when you are coming home, and you know that you're not letting them down. Everybody needs a home and especially if they don't have a parent some kids are looking for a parent like me I my I like having a mom like that was I want to know that I have a mom even though sometimes I'd rather not have a mom but I still know I need a mom I don't know if you are afraid to be put in foster care at least give it a chance and get to know your foster parents and maybe you'll end up in the situation I'm in <laughs>